بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين respected brothers and friends the Arabs before the arrival of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had many customs and beliefs which needed rectifying pre the advent of the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam the Arabs would do tawaf of the Kaaba naked and clothed The Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam entered their lives and caused a revolution not just in practice but also in ideas. One of the things that needed changing was the reaction of the individuals when they gave birth to a baby girl. The Arabs, they look down upon the birth of a girl. And they would say that a daughter is not as blissful as Ba Baraka than that of a male child. And this was one of the ideas that Islam came to remove. The Quran makes mention, وَإِذَا بُشْرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى that when one of them is given glad tidings of a girl, Valla wajhuhu muswadda, his face turns gloomy, wahuwa kadim, and he suppresses his anger. And then the Quran makes mention that the person within himself, he's having a battle. That do I live with this child with with dishonor? And humiliation. Or do I bury this daughter alive? And the Quran further on mentions that these bad qualities, this search and this understanding, belongs to whom? Those who don't believe in Allah. This understanding that a daughter, giving birth to a daughter, is a sense of shame. Is the mindset of those who don't believe in Allah and the last day. Over the weekend, I was speaking to some ulama who work in the field of Michael affairs, counseling, divorce. Allahu Akbar. I was taken aback by what I heard. There are Muslim women in the UK. In the UK, who are given talaq, who are given divorce because they have given birth to a, a daughter. We would have thought that maybe it takes place in Pakistan, in India, Bangladesh. But subhanallah, this ignorance which the Messenger sallallahu came 1400 years ago to eliminate. This same jahalat is found within our people today. Case upon case. And many of you sitting here will know, and will have witnesses firsthand, that there are women in our community, that when they give birth to a, a daughter, the mother-in-law, the sister-in-law, the husband gives tana to the wife. And we have women who have just given birth, a very difficult period of life, and straight after birth they fall into depression. And one of the causes is the Tana or the mother-in-law. My friends, the Messenger وسلم, came to wipe away this mentality. We claim to follow him alayhi salatu wasalam. Yet 1400 years later, the very same thing he came to wipe out is found within our hearts. There is a need of education. If you are a husband, 
if you are a father and your own mother is given tana to your wife, it's your duty to politely correct your mother. Because friends, any person, whether it's a mother-in-law or the husband, who feel a sense of sadness on the birth of a daughter, listen carefully, that person's iman is deficient. A person who feels a sense of loss and sadness upon the birth of a daughter, that person's iman is weak. That person does not truly believe in Allah on the last day. Because a person who believes in Allah on the last day, he would not feel a sense of guilt and shame when given a daughter. Rather, he would be grateful that Allah Jalla wa ala has given him a gift. And Allah predetermined, predestined for him to have a girl. And I finish on this. The most pure lineage ever to walk on the face of the earth was the Nasal, Nasab lineage of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And this path lineage is only alive today and has only been carried forward today because of Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha. The Nasal and Nasab of the Messenger alayhi salam was preserved by Allah through the leader of the women of Jannat, Fatima radiallahu anha. Three children, male children, Messenger alayhi salam passed away at birth. Four daughters remain alive. And Allah preserved the nasab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ahlul Bayt, through Fatima radiallahu anha. We ask Allah to give us the understanding of his deen. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi. And before the khutbah starts,